Hello and welcome to Weekly Weird News, brought to you by Cuff of the Bull in the post-truth apocalypse. I'm Ben, and as always, I'm hanging out with Mike. Hello. Claire. Hey. And Pete. Hello. And today is our weekly show where we bring you the most fucked up stuff we can find on the internet. Or weirdest, or creepiest, or, in this case, absolutely groundbreaking. It's called Weird News, and let's go. Revealed after 32 years, the top secret picture one MOD insider caused the most spectacular UFO photo ever captured, so why do officials want to keep the identity of the men who took it secret for another 50 years? And this Make MOD... Sure they're not alive and they've... No one can kind of chase them after... Chase after them <laughs> for... Probe them for information, I don't know. What. This the MOD them. inside and Nick Pope. Yes. Yeah, because he, he says it's the most... <clears throat> it's basically the best UFO yeah. photo ever captured. And the MOD destroyed the negatives and the copies, and one survived. Do we get to see it? You will get to see the yep. picture. Oh my way, it's this drip feeding, isn't it? Drip feed of aliens are Disclosure, yeah. yeah. Disc- disclosure. I saw some really good footage on the most recent episodes of Fright Night with Jack Osborne and the Ghost Brothers, I think they're called. Ghost Brothers. Yeah, three three black guys. They're, oh, funny, they're funny as fuck, but they, they go out doing the, the these haunted places, supposedly, and they just do like your Yvette Field in most haunted style, kind of check out these ghosty places. But yeah, they do a sit-down show where they, it's kind of like what we're doing now, but they're doing like a, a vlog cast, mm-hmm. so to speak, watching little video clips and there was a really, really good UFO video clip, and I tell you what, it was nothing that's been fucking made in this world. I'm pretty fucking certain of it. Number one, it was almost like U-shaped, mm. like that, like in the middle of the sky. And it had like clear, like red, like bright, almost like it looked like big thrusters. But it was just in the sky, and I'd, I'd love to find it. If I can find it, I will show you after. Okay. I'll see if I can find the footage. But yeah, it made yeah. me think, if that's real, then that definitely ain't no craft of ours. That's the whole question of, is it, is it real or is it fake? Yeah. Same with this one, but I suppose, but let's get into it. <clears throat> well, this, I did cover briefly on my little series, and I did British UFO sightings. Mm-hmm. So, August 4th, 1990, two young men were working as chefs in a hotel in Pitlockery, a beautiful Highland Perthshire town just sites outside the Cairngorms National Park in Scotland. 9pm, after a long day in a hot kitchen, they drove about 13 miles north along the A9 to Calveen, a spot on the edge of the Cairngorms for a walk in the hills. They hadn't gone far when they saw a huge diamond-shaped object about 100 feet long, hovering silently in the sky above them. Do you remember this, Claire? Yeah. Hmm. Terrified, they hid in some bushes and looked up. Minutes later, they heard the scream of jet aircraft going north. In 1990, RAF Lecures in Fife had two squadrons of tornado fighters on and 24-hour standby to intercept Russian intruder aircraft. The jet came back and circled the thing before heading off on its original course, as if the pilot had seen the object too and had come back for a closer look. Eventually, the two men stuck their camera out from where they were hiding and fired off six frames. At that point, the object shot vertically upwards and disappeared way up into the sky. Convinced they'd just seen a UFO, they took their photos to the Daily Record, one of Scotland's leading newspapers, but no story was ever printed. The paper passed the pictures on to the Ministry of Defence, and then the photograph simply vanished, along with the two young chefs. Yeah. Hmm. Until now. Really? Yep. Here, for the first time, it can be revealed that a missing, the, the missing, that missing picture... I was hoping you'd say the missing chefs. No. no, not, so lucky, not so lucky for them two <laughs> poor souls. No. Well, we don't know if they're alive or not. Their identities were basically never revealed. Mm. Yeah, because they were, they were at the bottom of the ocean swimming with the fishes. <laughs> or there's two chef-shaped mounds in the moors of Scotland now. Who knows? 
More I don't likely. know. We can't. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. The most spectacular UFO picture ever captured, and the holy grail in terms of hard evidence that these things really exist. And it's a picture that the MOD and the National Archives have tried their utmost to keep hidden. While the information would normally have been released after 30 years, the Ministry has not released the original photo, and wants the names of witnesses sealed for a further 54 years until 2076 because of, quote, privacy concerns. Like I said, they want to keep their identities hidden so people don't harass them. That's what they're saying anyway. That is a copy of the picture right there. We'll get a better one of it for you. Mm -hmm. You see that then? Looks like there's two of them, doesn't there? Probably, yeah. That's the jet. That's one of the jets. Oh, that's the jet. Yeah, well, it should have been one. So, looking at the photo now, the Calvine photo that's been released, only 17 hours ago onto the internet. Yeah. Right. It's breaking news. So it is breaking news. Late, um, sorry, what but you can see is a beautiful Scottish background, backdrop there, with a diamond-shaped, pretty big UFO. I'd say the 100 feet estimate is, is perfectly represented in the photo there. Looks as big as a jet, doesn't it? I think the jet's smaller. It's, it's further away. It's further away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Small, right, further right. away. <laughs> Ted. Ted. That doesn't look like a tornado though, does it? No, they're saying it's tornadoes. But Oops, I don't expect two chefs to know what military aircraft are flying but, around in Scotland. But a tornado flying at normal speeds will have its wings out. That's true, but I think the nose is wrong. Look, it does look more like a Harrier jump jet from me. I had a little bit of a discussion last night in a UFO group about this, and it was an amicable discussion for once because everyone realises that this is big news, and I said. I personally, my opinion is that that jet is a Harrier. Yeah, Harrier jump jet all day long. Because every, basically everyone agreed it wasn't a tornado, but we, it could be a Jaguar, which is a type of plane we were still flying in the 1990s, had a slightly longer nose like the Harrier. We basically said, well, it's either a Jaguar or a Harrier. Oh, come on, we're arguing about the fucking the play. Look at the talk it's about more the UFOs. Like the area, but yes, you're talking about you are. Right. I know, but I'm just saying that yeah, but doesn't UFO, matter, does it? No, it doesn't. It's not a matter of the story though, for it to be legitimate. This is this is yeah. this is the only way I look at that. Well, it's like, like you said, it's two chefs. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to know. I, don't, no, I can't either. tell. I don't know. It's a I like jet it. to me. It's a plane. I like the idea of that Harry is hovering, having a fucking look at it. Yeah. Because they could hover mid-air, couldn't and they? And that was the other thing. Is it stationary? Because yeah. if the spacecraft, I'm putting in quotes, is stationary... Is uh, the jet moving the or jet, hovering? If the jet's moving, it did a fucking very good job of capturing that still. That's so I would point. say that is hovering. That is checking out exactly what that is. So the fucking military 100% have this fully documented. Yeah. Because that's a Harrier jump jet hovering at the same fucking level, maybe a hundred feet away. Yeah, as often to the right, it's just having a good look. Fully isn't it? armed with sidewinders and heat seekers, etc., etc., ready to open fire if need be. Looks a bit like a Star Wars Star Destroyer from the side, doesn't it? It does a little bit, yeah. Because you can see it is fully equipped. It's just missing the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Harrier, yeah, he's got you missiles. Can see, you, you can, can see, see his on missiles there. on there. Yeah, that's this is the yeah, I can't get I can't I don't know if I can articulate how big news this is. Well let's let's have a little, little think here, right? So if they're in a similar position, yeah? Like if the Harrier jump jet's not a couple of hundred metres beyond it. If yes. it's at a similar distance, then you look at the size of that Harrier if a Harrier or a tornado or a Jaguar or whatever it could be, yeah, the length of that is at least thirty foot. Yeah, and you, to you can probably, if you use your imagination, you can probably fit at least so two I'm, and a bit, three of them planes into that, that shape. 80 to 100 feet. Yeah? In I agree length. with that. Uh, uh, that's what well, I'm trying think, to work you think out there. You think the UFO is three times bigger than that plane? Yeah. Oh, not far no, off. No, not no. far I'd off. I'd say they're about the same size. No, it's much smaller. Could it? It's much smaller than that at the moment, but it's it's far away. Yeah, but this is what I was trying to I say. It's like it's, I think at least two. If it's, at least two. If they're at a similar distance, but what if the jet is actually a hundred foot closer? There's a couple of potentials. If it's on the same level, yeah, you're talking at least two and a half lengths of that. So you're talking eighty foot all day long. Yeah, if it's a hundred foot closer to the camera, that could be a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty no. foot long. If it's a hundred foot past it, 
then that could be similar size to the plane. It depends on the ratio and where the actual yeah. we don't plane know the positions sits. and yeah. a, because it's Scotland, there's no, no sort of. It's just well, either it's, way is. That's that the clearest that photo. Fucking weird. It's, it's, not, it's the clearest it. photo you're ever going to see, isn't it? Let's face it. Can I not it. say it's yeah. like a hundred foot or something? Yeah. It's either way, it's the clearest photo you're ever going to see. Yeah, Let's go b- go back to the article. That's pretty incredible. Like if this is written by a university lecturer and investigative reporter who spent three decades immersed in the world of UFOlogy and had heard the story of the mysterious Calvin file as a missing photo and report of that incident that Calvin came to be known many moons ago and have devoted the past 13 years to searching for the images the men took. What happened to the file, the men who pictured the UFO, and how and why its very existence has been suppressed for 32 years was a puzzle that he was determined to crack. However, when he searched for answers, he found insiders blocking the inquiries. Until he struck lucky and found a retired RF officer, Craig Lindsay, the first official to speak to one of the young chefs after that night. And he was willing to talk. And most exciting of all, he discovered that he'd broken protocol that day and stashed a copy of the image before, on Whitehall's orders, sending the entire dossier, negatives included, to the Ministry of Defence in London. Good boy. He kept the secret copy in his desk for 32 years. Don't know why he's done that, though. Hidden inside his copy of the great aircraft of the world. And when, I, when he was eventually tracked down, he's now 83 and still living in Scotland, he sounded relieved. He said, to quote him, I've been waiting for someone to contact about this for more than 30 <laughs> years. Fuck, he's going to the, he's going to the paper then? I guess he knows it's fucking classified. What would they do to him if he came out? Get in if he found the out the position, yeah. the position he was in, he'd be in so much shit. Official Secrets Act. Now he's too old to give a fuck anyway. I suppose. And he, he's too old to have wanted to do anything about yeah. it. It's the official secrets. It's a combination of things. They wanted that photo gone. What would have happened to him? The men in black would have certainly been round for a chat. He's broken his protocol and he's probably broken the official secrets act, which means he'd go to jail for the rest of his life if he came out this 30 Treason. years ago. Yeah. Treason, essentially. Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd have been 25, 30 years in jail, easy. Right. At 82, are they really going to put him in, you know, how long is the rest of his life and are they really going to do that to him as an old man? So we don't give too many okay. fucks anymore. So yes, it is a black and white image printed on colour paper and the trees and the fence do look a little blurry, as if the photographer took it in a moment of panic, which I guess is consistent with their story. Yeah. But the camera is focused on the weird diamond-shaped object in the centre of the frame. And unlike many other UFO images, this is clearly a structured craft of unknown origin. It looks otherworldly and unlike any conventional aircraft, and it's the best UFO photograph this guy's ever seen. And I would agree with that. Mm. Andrew Robinson, a senior lecturer in photography at Sheffield Hallam University, is convinced it's genuine, and if it is a hoax, then it's a highly elaborate one involving expensive, sophisticated equipment and flying models not at the disposal of two jobbing hotel chefs. Mm. He said, and I'll quote him, my conclusion is the object is definitely in front of the camera. That is, it's not a fake produced in post-production, and its placement within the scene appears to be approximately halfway between the foreground fence and the plane in the background. So the plane is behind then? Yep. Okay. Mr Lindsay, the pragmatic, logical former civil servant who spent ten years in the military, is convinced the image and the frightened man he spoke to on that day are genuine. Initially he was worried about speaking to me in case he was in breach of the Official Secrets Act, but after 32 years of doing what he was told and keeping quiet, he now wants the truth to emerge. Quote him again, as the press officer in S- for Scotland, I dealt with many UFO reports, but most were just uh, lights in the sky. It was obvious that this one was different, and when I asked what sort of noise it made, the man said it didn't make any noise at all. He, up to that point, I wasn't treating it very seriously, but when he said it was silent, I suddenly realised there's no aircraft that I know of that is silent. Lindsay arranged the negatives the men had handed to the Daily Record to be collected and faxed a copy of the best print to the Ministry of Defence's now defunct UFO desk in London. Before I could even get to my desk, the phone was ringing and my contact said, tell me more about this, can you get the negatives? When he visited the MOD later that year, however, he saw the Calvin photo blown up to poster size on the UFO office wall. I asked how they were getting on, he said. They said it was being investigated and I was told to leave it to London. They asked me not to get involved, so I've done exactly that. 
<laughs> the years passed, so I gradually I just forgot about the print in my drawer. And now I hope the two witnesses will come forward to tell their own stories. And I think we can all hope so too. Yeah. 2008, the MOD UFO branch was disbanded. But I think that is massive. Yeah. It says there that the logs, any very harrier flights are removed, but they're not going to say they're leave them in if they've been discovered they've been flying around that space at that time, are they? Mm-hmm. I think that's the best photo you're ever going to see of a UFO. I advise you go and see it, listener. Type in Calvine, at C-A-L-V-I-N-E, photo into your Google machine, and, you know, have a look at it. Yep. And it's big yourself. news that that's been found. Well, now hasn't the Ministry of Defence got to say something? Nothing has been forthcoming so far. Well, they're going to have to say something, though, aren't they? I think they may just hope for it. Let's ignore it and hope it goes away. Mm. But that's, I don't think that's fake. I, I don't... I mean... Nick Pope, all right, he comes up with some random shit, but he did run the UFO desk and... He said it was the best photo he'd ever seen. That's it. He's, it could be the one, couldn't it? The one what? The one photo that says, like, you know what? Something's that's not ours. Definitive photo. Yeah. That is not ours. We don't know what it is. It's not anything military. We don't know for certain, do you? It could be a prototype of some sort. Well, that's why the the Ministry of Defence, you know, maybe maybe now's the time. Maybe they should say something. No, you know they like. For what reason keep it? National keeping security, it, uh, isn't keep, it? Keep, no, it's not national security though. It's world security now, isn't it? Well, yeah, if that's, if so, that's, that's what it, excuse, isn't if it? that's what it is, and it is more security, it. you're right. So the world does deserve. Well, not if it, but not if it's a British experimental plane that didn't they didn't carry on with it. But they don't. They still don't want to admit that they're you know researching things like that. I don't know. They do test a lot of shit up in the islands and lo- of Scotland because it's remote and there's not many people. Trouble with the photograph, it's ne- it's as good as you're gonna get unless it's. You can see right in it, it's got like alien writing and you can actually see alien beings in it. Even then that could be faked. It's just some alien have... dude sticking his ass against the window. <laughs> You've got to have hard evidence, haven't you? Yeah. If we could get one of these things or part of it... How do you know we haven't? Well, that's it. We don't. It's not a Harrier. That's the smoking gun, isn't it? But it is a damn good photo. It's it is. It's the closest you're going to get with a photograph, I think. It's not a Harrier. What do you think? A tornado or Jaguar, then? It's definitely not a Harrier. Alright, so yeah, I think we can all agree that's pretty fucking spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Okay, moving on. Some Stranger Things fans are now trying to cancel Metallica. What? What? Twats. They've taken issue with some of Metallica's past actions, with some dubbing them racist, and their opposition claiming cancel culture is at work. Stranger Things fans fell in love with Joseph Quinn's Eddie Munson in the latest instalment of the popular Netflix series after Eddie performed a brilliant rendition of Metallica's Master of Puppets it was metal as fog which he actually learned to he play he did learn yeah. to play it yeah, so he could play it the son of Metallica's bassist taught him to play it fair play like <laughs> he just didn't do the solo did he probably not no, no he didn't but he did the rest of it. Many fans discovered the rock band for the first time and subsequently stumbled on, on problematic moments. The series of actions have since caused quite the stir on both TikTok and Twitter, with many coming to the band's defence. This is Serena Trueblood, who runs a whole TikTok account based on trying to cancel stuff. What? She mm. says, I find it interesting that they only cared about gatekeeping in their fandom when they started getting big again from Stranger Things. They only care about what lines their pockets. What? TikTok user Serena Trueblood seemingly spurred the conversation, detailing how former bassist Jason Newstead appeared to do a Nazi salute on stage. The band also mocked the then recent death of Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain. Many fans accused singer James Hetfield of racism after Trueblood shared a clip of GNR's backup singer Roberta Freeman, who alleged that Hepfield referred to rapper Ice T using a racially charged slur. GNR frontman Axel Rose accused the band of racism at the time, which was also included in the TikTok video. Yeah, because Axel Rose wearing that Confederate flag headband isn't racist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, have they never heard of the 1980s and yeah. 1990s? It's like things were very different. Do they realise how old they are? I don't think they do. No, probably not. 
I think it's going t- around 50 years nearly. Well, <laughs> 1970 years. something like late 70s they started. Yeah, things are very very different. Condemning them for things that they've done in the past. Oh yeah, that's pretty really much. For everyone, yeah, this this Serena Tuber just basically gets off on trying to cancel people. This is your whole channel dedicated to it. And you think, well, why don't you put that energy somewhere more positive? Mm-hmm. You could have cured cancer by now. Yeah. Yeah. So what if they are dicks? Who cares? I enjoy their music. Yeah, I know James Hetfield is not a nice guy. He goes hunting. I don't really agree with hunting yeah. for sport. He does it. I don't really like it. But you know what? Fuck it. It's his life. He's not breaking any laws, is he? No. As you the stuff where, you know what? It was the fucking... It was the late 80s to early 90s. And the world was a very different place. I watched that Woodstock 99 documentary this week. Yeah. Right? It's three episodes. It's well worth the watch. You can see how far the attitudes towards women have come. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, What's these that on Netflix? yeah, these girls in the crowd are just getting fucking basically molested, yeah. and they were just giggling it off. Whether that was out of fear, you can see someone weren't comfortable, but they had to go along with it. Cameras are on, yeah. and you're like, Jesus, they're getting groped and the, as they're crowd surfing. And the, I things have groped. Yeah, I know, but that like, really, you, it's very visibly being oh. yeah. groped. And you know, four confirmed rapes at least. It was it was a shit show. Yeah. Things have come a long fucking way. Yeah. Even yeah, since nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. That's done a lot of good, eh? Yeah, that was actually started as a result of Woodstock ninety nine. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was because of that. It was it, yeah, I know what you're saying. It was, you so much. But it was yeah, it was started because of that. It was mm. a big founder for that. So things have come a long way and you can't Unless they're doing some really bad illegal shit, what can you say? It's like, you accept the past, don't you? Yeah. You, you look how far we've come. Yeah, it's a different time, wasn't it? I mean, you can't obviously excuse everything. Metallica aren't putting people into camps. <laughs> you know, they're just no. being a bit risque. And they're not, you know, you know, I should imagine they're watching what they say these days, you know. Being yeah, same as anyone. more politically yeah. correct. Yeah, of course, they were the same as, as we try to, same as any podcaster or any artist does. Yeah. You know. It's bad because, you know. Things that were acceptable then aren't acceptable now, and that's good. We've moved on. We need yeah. to punish people for things they did when it was acceptable. Do you know what I mean? That's harsh, isn't it? That's yeah. it. So, yeah, anyway, moving on. But, uh, still, it's like, man, that sucks. I had a weird feelings about that song being used in Stranger Things and other people raving about it because I was like, part of me wants to gatekeep a little bit. And part of me is quite happy that they got new fans. Yeah. Part of me wants to go, ah, fuck them. They've only, fu- they've only found it because of Stranger Things. They would have never heard it. Mm. Fuck them. Really, did, uh, very conflicting emotions with that. And I was like, you know what? Nah, they've got new fans. It's okay. <laughs> In the end, I came around. Do I had to think about it? I had to think and a drink about it. <laughs> Moving on, the Loch Ness Monster sighting was actually an escaped alpaca going for a swim. Uh, <laughs> A mischievous bunch of alpacas have tripped people around Loch Ness into thinking that they've seen Nessie in the flesh. Nah, apart from the fucking hair. Yeah. <laughs> the herd managed to escape their sanctuaries owners on multiple occasions as they, as they frantically tried to find them. You would think that was Nessie though if you were yeah. fucking driving past and you saw like... So a big long neck silhouetted over yeah, there. Yeah, totally. Oh my god, it's Nessie! Uh. Some of them were out on an organised trek with paying animal lovers, while others found ways to join them on the journey. Yeah. So there was like more than one, and you were like, oh, it's a family of Nessies. Yeah. It's the family Ness. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, viewers on social media were left in stitches. Lo Mac wrote, cue the Nessie sightings from the other side of the lock. Ryan McKenzie added, closest looking animal to Nessie. Did Aww. you, um... As you see that the chances of a palas what are they call palasaurs, peliosaurs, something like mm. that. I don't know what they think Nessie might be. Actually, the chances of one surviving a lock were actually really high. They found, they find a fucking oh, they found something, and showed that yeah, these things like were smaller but still existed up to a certain point. So the chances of one actually surviving a lock ness, it was a sufficient gene pool, might have, might have lasted a bit. It's a huge body of water as well. It's the biggest body of water, inland water in the UK, if not Europe. Mm. Definitely the UK. 
Well, some boffins. Have you can tell us the Daily Star. Boffins. Boffins. I've got a new bombshell Nessie theory suggesting it may have been a, a freshwater sort of dinosaur. A freshwater alpaca. <laughs> you know, Nessie back in the day, it might have been oh, that's a Megalodon or something like that. That's what I was on about, yeah. Please your soul. Please your soul. Please your soul, yeah. Mm. Oh. Alpacas are funny things. They are, aren't they? I'd have one as a pet. I'd keep it in the garden, I wouldn't have it in the house because it's shit everywhere. <laughs> You'll be cleaning that up, do you? Oh, I'd have one. Bit of salt and pepper. <laughs> yeah. Bit of grated oh, puffing on. You oh, stole my line, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> grated puffing. If you were offered grated puffing, would you turn it down? Fucking no. I'd have it. I'd mm-hmm. try it. Grated puffing? Yeah, man. Why yeah. would you grate it? I don't Why know. You just this, it a slab of meat? It was this thing that Clarkson was sat in this restaurant in like Norway or something, Jerry Clarkson, and he, uh, he was eating, I think he was eating whale. Seal. <laughs> Seal. And they were like, well, they asked if he wanted some grated puffin on that, and he said, yes, I would. <laughs> and they just brought this little bit of puffin out, and he just grated it over the top. Never. That sounds nasty. <laughs> well, I don't know. Go I'd on, give then. it a go. You want some alpaca grated over that, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I see puffins are kind of cute, but alpacas are cute too, but I just wouldn't think about it. Hmm. Okay, and finally, Pete? So, a bear filmed tripping on hallucinogenic mad honey. Poor little thing, I tell you what, if you if you can find the video of this. Oh, it, was on, it was on news, so a lot of people will have seen this. Yep, yeah. go and look for it, we'll watch it. So we've just watched the video and yeah, he looks spaced out to fuck, doesn't he? I love the bit where he's just leaned up against the corner of the van with his legs spread and his hand on his nuts. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like a little person. That'll be like me later on when I get in. He, just looks, he does look like a little person, a little furry person. It's like Paddington Bear's just gone down a bad road. He's got a very dazed look in his eyes. Yes. But yeah, so video footage has emerged of a bear cub in Turkey that was seemingly intoxicated after reportedly consuming excessive amounts of substance known as mad honey, which has psychoactive properties. Turkish media outlet basically had a video clip of the animal on Twitter showing a bear sitting in a pickup truck, seemingly in distress. Didn't look very stressed. No, no. He looked like he was just like, he was having a bad trip, I think. But But basically, he consumed uh, the honey or... Delibal, as known in Turkish, from uh, beehives in the Yijilka, possibly Yijilka district of Dus, maybe. <laughs> it's a province a in province northwestern in Turkey. Northwestern <laughs> Turkey, located in the country's Black Sea coast. Well, never read the Twitter post <laughs> in Turkish, please. <laughs> According to. Doku's Eight Haber. Um, the Turkish media outlet. The Turkish media outlet. Doku's Eight Haber. No, you don't, you, all you've got to say is the Turkish media outlet that's filled it. Don't, don't try and pronounce it. Just don't, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yes, the Turkish forestry officials subsequently picked up the bear and placed the animal on the back of a pickup where the video was filmed. He appears to be confused in a drunk like state and also seems to be having difficulty breathing. The bear eventually passed out and was taken to the vet. The cub, took him to the vet? Yeah, yeah. The cub whose name was Balakiz and is, is now in good health Balakiz. and will be released into the wild as soon as possible. So basically the bees take this hallucinogenic plant and it gets turned into hallucinogenic honey. Yeah. And it is a delicacy in some parts. Yeah, this bear just grabbed hold of some and got wrecked off his tits. He did get wrecked off his tits. Cool, he was it? having a right laugh. I wonder if you could bring it back into the country. That sounds good, doesn't it? Mad honey. Mad yeah. honey. See, he Sweet was... Big Britain. He, he was flying through the jungle, right, having a great time, playing with snakes and little boys. Stop the jungle book, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, what I, that's what I was going to do. I want to be like you. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden he wakes up and he's in a fucking vet in a little cage, like... What the fuck? <laughs> How do I get here? And they called him Balkis, which is Turkish for bollocks. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I just read that. <laughs> I hope it's Turkish for Baloo. Oh, mm. Balkis, no, is that I what it was? Call him bollocks. Yeah. Or bollocks. Bollocks is good. I like it. Z. Why do you. Bears have got a bit of a history of getting wanked, haven't they? 
And elephants. I've seen the elephants have grapes. They've got a lot of grapes. Fermented grapes. Yeah. yeah. They get pissed and just pass yes, out, don't they? Yeah. There's yeah. dolphins with puffer fish. Oh, yeah. I actually batted them around like footballs. Yeah, just because they release a toxin. Ah, gives them eye, yeah. Snort it like. Yeah. Do you know in World War II, a bear was assigned to a Polish unit in Italy and used to carry artillery mm. shells for them? Never. Yeah. Yeah. You even give him a rank and everything. It's like a pretty really popular children's story now in Poland. About this bear. I'm not sure it was Wojciech or something like that. Bear that could. He, yeah, he served on the front line, he had a little tin hat for him and everything. He was carrying artillery shells up in his hands and he's walking on his back legs. He used to smoke. Yeah, uh, sure. He did. He used to smoke. He used to drink. He used to have the vodka. I think he made him a corporal. Uh, well, look at that after we finish this. <laughs> just to prove, just so I can prove to Claire that bears can smoke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much for listening. I've been Ben. You can follow us on Facebook and cut the ball in the post through the apocalypse. YouTube at Apocalypse Ball and most podcasting platforms at Cutting Through the Ball and the PTA. And I'm going to say, keep watching the skies. The truth is out there. That photo is real. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Call me Morda. <laughs> I'm in Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you and give me some of that mad honey. <laughs> Everyone's got to be like, you see Peter Claire like, you. Bastard! Uh, you stole my line earlier. You're stealing theirs now. See, <laughs> I've got my Get in there first. Oh. And I've been clear. Stop picking on your granddad. Granddad Metallica. Yeah. And I've been Pete. I want some of that fucking honey too. <laughs> to share, yeah, man. share and like. Share and share and like, of course, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when you're both squirming around on the floor, <laughs> off your face is me and Claire. You're just like, oh, Fucking idiots. I wanted some as well. You right. only sober yeah. one, mate. All right, I'm not having that. <laughs> so, peace out. May the force be with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, peace out. You're question three. You can't say that. You're not a just with Jedi. How do you know? My lightsaber was arriving soon. Does that make me a Jedi? No. Does it make me then? You come with a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it comes useful. <laughs> <laughs> Step ahead of you, Mike. Where's yeah. your lightsaber? <laughs> they don't exist, but it's break. It. It's just plastic. No, it's real. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.